Welcome to our practical approach to master calculus. In this video, we'll discuss limits. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. You can master strategies in just one month. We are going to discuss solution of 10 questions based on limits. And in these 10 questions, you can see the variety which is normally required to understand this topic. So we have direct substitution, solution with factoring, rationalization, and substitution of variable. All this is part of our program, which is to master strategies in calculus. So if you really want to learn, here is the program. We have uh, listed out 26 lessons in which we can cover this course for you. Feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com for the details. So we can have one-on-one -on -one classes and group classes for understanding calculus and mastering the techniques required. So now let's begin with the solution of these questions one by one. All 10 of them will be solved in this particular video. And I'm going to discuss with you strategies as we move along. In the following videos, I'll also share with you some of the other questions which you should know when you want to understand calculus. Perfect. So let's begin with the solution of the first two questions which are relatively straightforward, right? So what we have in question number one is limit when x approaches a constant pi and the function is 2x whole cube. So clearly, uh, you can substitute pi here and what you get is 2 pi whole cube, right? And that gives you the solution 8 pi cube as the answer, perfect. In the next one, we have limit of 3. So the function is a constant 3 and you are approaching value. x is approaching square root of 5. So think about it like this. You know, some students do have confusion in understanding the problem itself. So when we say y equals to 3, we mean a horizontal line, right? So limit when x is approaching square root 5 will be what? Well, at every point, it will be the same value as 3 and for this particular limit which is for x approaching square root of 5 for the function which is a constant k will be just the constant value 3 right so that's straightforward now let's see uh, question number 3 and 4 in these questions we will apply the strategy of factoring to find the limit now here what you notice is that we need to find what is the limit when x approaches 3 and we have 9 minus x squared over x minus 3. Now if I substitute 3 here then what do we get? We get 9 minus 3 squared which is also 9. 9 minus 9 is 0 and we get 3 minus 3. So we have a form which is 0 over 0. Now that is very important to understand. 0 over 0 means what? Right? It means it, we call this as indeterminate form, right? Simply because we cannot divide by zero. So we don't know really, uh, you know, what will be the limit as x approaches 3. But there is one thing very clear that denominator is zero for x approaching 3 and numerator is also th zero when x approaching 3. That means there is a common factor of x minus 3. Now, once we cancel out this common factor in the graph, it will result as a whole, right, which you can approach from both the sides, correct? So, we do have a value. So, that is the basic concept. So, we are trying to eliminate this common factor some way or the other and therefore, we will proceed with the solution as writing the question in a simplified form. 9 minus x squared can be written as 3 minus x times 3 plus x, right? And the denominator 
is x minus 3. So x minus 3 means what? So we can write this as limit x approaches 3, of course, right? x approaches 3. So we have 3 minus x. Let me write 3 minus x times 3 plus x. And here we can take minus outside, right? So we have 3 minus x. Now with that, we can cancel out this common factor, which was giving us 0 in both numerator and denominator. Once we do that, then we can substitute 3 and get our answer, right? So, once you do that, then you can substitute 3 here, right? And what you get is 3 plus 3, which is indeed equals to 6 with a negative sign, right? Divide by minus 1. So, minus 6 is your answer. So, the limit of this function as x approaches 3 is minus 6. Does it make sense to you, right? So I hope the concept is clear. Now let us take up the solution of question number 4. So in question number 4, if you substitute 2, what will you notice? You will notice that again you get 0 over 0. So like in question number 3, it is indeterminate form. We do have a factor x minus 2 in the numerator and x minus 2 in the denominator. So let's try to now factor it out and then find the limit. So the procedure will be Let's copy the question first, which is x is approaching 2, the numerator being 2x square minus 7x plus 6, and the denominator is 4x square, 4x minus x cube. So you can factor numerator and denominator, apply product and sum. We are looking for a product of 6 times 2, 12, and sum of minus 7. So, how do you get 12? 4 and 3 will give us 12, both negative, right? So, we have here 2x square minus 4x minus 3x plus 6 over. You can take x common here. So, you get 4 minus x square. So, that gives you limit x approaches 2. So, in the numerator, you can take 2x common from the first two terms. You are left with x minus 2, right? And you can take 3 common, minus 3. You get left with x minus 2 here also. And here we can write this as 2 minus x times 2 plus x. Clear. So now we can cancel out the common factors, correct? In the numerator and denominator. So we do have uh, uh, x minus 2 as a common factor, right? And we get here 2x minus 3. In the denominator, we have x times 2 minus x times 2 plus x. So as you can see, you can cancel this with minus 1, correct? So last time what we did was we wrote the denominator as negative, but you could write numerator also negative and then factor this out, correct? Okay. So both are correct approaches. Limit x approaches 2. You're left with 2x minus 3 in the numerator. And x times 2 plus x in the denominator. Now if I substitute 2, uh, we can have a value. So we'll substitute 2 here. So we get 2 times 2 minus 3 over 2 times 2 plus 2, right? So 4 minus 3 is 1. And uh, 4 times 2 is 8. And so we have our limit as equals to 1 over 8, right? So that is how we are going to solve question number 4. So I hope this strategy of factoring is absolutely clear. Perfect. Let's move on further with our next type of question. Well, we have to find the limit when x approaches 0. So if I put 0, you again put 0 here and you will see it is half minus half, which is 0 and over 0. So it is again indeterminate. Now in this particular question, what I will do is simplify. So we are using a new technique here. So we just uh, rewrite the equation and simplify with common denominator. So we have limit x approaches 0. So we have 1 over 2 plus x minus half over x, right? So if I take this common denominator, we get limit x approaches 0. So I'm taking 2 plus x times 2 as the common denominator, right? So just cross multiply 2 minus 
2 plus x over x squared. So you can rewrite this as limit x approaches 0. The 2 minus, so we, let me write 2 minus 2 minus x. Clear? Great. Over, so we can write this term as 2 times 2 plus x times x. So in the numerator, you can clearly see that we have 2 minus 2 is 0, so we get minus x there, right? So limit x approaches 0. In the numerator, we have minus x. And in the denominator, we have 2x times 2 plus x. Now, we have 2x times 2 plus x. So x and x cancel. So once that cancel, you get limit x approaches 0 minus 1 over. Here we have 2 times 2 plus x. Now, you can substitute 0 and get the result, right? So, we get minus 1 over 2 times 2, which is minus 1 by 4. So, you get the answer minus 1 by 4. So, we have learned another technique, which is you could actually simplify it, right? So, and get your result. So, I hope that makes sense. So, here we have the next question, question number 6. Now, whenever you have square root terms, as in this particular case, uh, you will notice that rationalization is the best technique. Now, let me just show you that if I substitute 4 here, what happens, right? So, we have square root of 4 plus 5 minus 3 over 4 minus 4. So, clearly we have uh, in the numerator, which is square root of 9 minus 3 over 4 minus 4 is 0. And that is 3 minus 3, which is 0 over 0. So, again, it is an indeterminate, right? So, whenever the indeterminate is there, you know that x minus 4 is a factor in the numerator also. But how do we get this factor? Now, that is a very beautiful technique called rationalization, which we are just going to do. Well, in case you want to join my courses, feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Our students are doing extremely well and we can be part of your success. So let's continue with the solution of the question, which is limit x approaches 4, square root of x plus 5 minus 3 over x minus 4. So rationalization basically means multiply and divide by the conjugate. So we are rationalizing the numerator in this particular case. So I will do it like this, x plus 5 plus 3, right, over x plus 5 plus 3 square root. So, when you multiply and divide by the same term, it is as good as multiplying by 1, which doesn't really change the expression. And so, that's perfectly fine. Now, if you open the bracket, you get a square minus b square in the numerator. So, we have limit x approaches 4. a square minus b square means we have square of square root, which is x plus 5 now, right? minus 3 square, which is 9, right, over the denominator, which is x minus 4 times everything, right, which is square root of x plus 5 plus 3. Now, uh, let's uh, simplify the numerator. So, you, what you notice here is that in the numerator, we could isolate the common factor, which is x minus 4, right? And that was giving you 0 by 0, correct? And now I think you, are, you can see the solution for yourself, right? So these terms cancel and what we get is the limit x approaches 4 of 1 over square root of x plus 5 plus 3. So if I now substitute 4, I get 1 over square root of 4 plus 5, which is 9, square root of 9 is 3, and so we get our answer, which is 1 over 3 plus 3, or 1 over 6. So we get our solution, which is 1 over 6, clear? So that is the technique called rationalization, very important. So I hope uh, it's absolutely clear to you. Perfect. Let's continue with the last four questions as we move on very interesting cases will come now here we have a uh, important function absolute value function 
absolute value of x minus 5 times x plus 1 divided by x minus 5. Clearly, by substituting 0, we do get a form 0 by 0. Again, it is an indeterminate. How do we solve it? Now, let's try to understand what is this function, absolute value of x minus 5. Now, this function is defined as minus of x minus 5 when x is less than or equal to 5. And it is x minus 5 when x is greater than 5, right? Now, equal to, you could write on either side. It doesn't really matter. Perfect. So, that is what it is. Okay, so now what we will do is if we'll try to find the limit of this function when x approaches from the left side of 5 and from right side of 5. Correct? So, we will have to figure out what is the limit when x approaches 5 from the left side. Right? So, that minus means from the left side. So, square root part, I could write this as minus of x minus 5. Correct? Times, of course, we have x plus 1 and we have to divide by x minus 5. So, this part will give us limit x approaches 5 from the left side, it means. So, these two cancel, correct? So, we get negative of x plus 1. And so, when I substitute 5 here, I get negative of 5 plus 1, which is negative 6. So, from the left side, we approach 6, right? Negative 6. Now, let us also see what happens when we want to find the limit as x approaches 5 from the right-hand side. So, from the right-hand side, the expression now becomes x minus 5, positive, right, times x plus 1 over x minus 5. Now, this time, x minus 5 cancels, and so it is equal to x plus 1, right? So, let me rewrite here. So, it is equal to limit x approaches 5, this time from positive side, we have x plus 1, and substituting, we get 5 plus 1, which is positive 6, do you see? So, from here, we can see that the limit of this particular function, when x approaches 5 from the left side, let me write f of x here, right? So, is not equal to the limit when x approaches 5 from the right-hand side of the same function, right? So, basically, it does not exist. For the limit to exist, we should have the same value being approached from both the sides. If that is not the case, then the limit does not exist. You get the idea, right? So, that's how it is. So, I hope the concept is clear. Feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Perfect. Let's move on to question number 8 now, which is... Uh, we need to find when x equals to 0 for cube root of x plus 8 minus 2 divided by x. Of course, when I substitute 0 here, I again get 0 over 0. Now, we need to factor out x. How do we do so? In this particular case, we are going to use a different method, which is substitution of variable. So, in this case, what we are going to do is we will substitute x plus 8 as, let's say, u, right? You could you could do the couple of ways to do it. So, let's say, let's say cube root of, we can also substitute cube root of x plus 8 as equal to a variable u. So, in that case, what really happens? We get x plus 8 is u cube, right? Or x is equal to u cube minus 8. Is that clear to you? So, what we have done is instead of cube root of x plus 8, we substitute a value u. Now, if u is, a, if x is approaching 0, what happens to u? Let's look into this part. So, if x approaches 0, then what happens? So, then we have cube root of 0 plus 8, right? Which is cube root of 8, right? Which is equal to 2. So, u approaches 2. So, that is a substitution which we need to do. So, we will rewrite the whole question as limit. u approaches 2, right? And the numerator being u minus 2. And the denominator is x equals to u cube 
minus a. Does that make sense? A bit tricky here, right? So this is uh, one of the best substitution you could do to get your result perfect. Now, we need to factor the denominator a cube minus b cube formula is known to you, right? So you can apply this formula. So you know what is a cube minus b cube equals to, right? Which is a minus b times a square plus a b plus b square. So applying this formula, we can now factor the denominator. So we get limit u approaches 2. We have u minus 2 over u minus 2 times u square plus 2u, right? Plus 2 square, which is 4. Now, u minus 2 cancels. So we get the limit u approaches 2, 1 over u square plus 2u plus 4. And that gives you. Now we can substitute 2 here. So we get 1 over 2 square plus 2 times 2 plus 4, which is 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is 12. So we get 1 over 12 as our answer for this particular question. Is that clear to you? So I hope you have understood the method of substitution. So we are substituting a part as a different variable. And also note that the limit also has to be in the same variable. Make sense, correct? Great. So with that, let's move on to the next question, which is question number 9. Now this is relatively simple. We have to apply the formula a cube plus b cube to get the result, right? So you can always pause the video, answer the question. Those of you who want to learn directly from me, feel free to send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Perfect. So let me rewrite this question, which is limit x approaches minus 4, and we have 64 plus x cube over 4 plus x. Again, this is 0 over 0 form, which we are calling indeterminate, and so it can be factored. The factor 4 minus x is there, right? So 4 plus x is there in the numerator also. So we'll just apply the formula. Okay, you know what is a cube plus b cube, which is a plus b times a square minus a b plus b square. So, so, we have limit x approaches minus 4, the numerator being 4 cube, right? So, 64 is 4 cube. Let me write this as 4 cube first, right? Then we'll expand. No problems, right? Plus. And we have 4 plus x. So, now expanding, we get this as limit x approaches minus 4. And we have 4 plus x. You get the common factor. Square of 4, I'm writing 16 minus 4x right plus x square and we have 4 plus x which cancels so now you can substitute minus 4 so we get 16 times minus of 4 times minus 4 plus minus 4 square right? so so we get 16 plus 16 and this is also plus 16, correct? So 16 times 3, which is 48. So limit of this particular function is 48, right? So that is how we are going to answer this particular question. I hope it is absolutely clear. So this was an example with factoring. Now here is the last question, which I'll treat this as your test problem, right? Now, this question you could solve using factoring because you know what is a cube minus b cube formula. You can do substitution of variable. Perfect. But here is a tricky part. Now, you know this is 0 by 0. What kind of substitution should we do? So that's a thing, right? So basically, if you see, the function is limit x approaching 1. And we have x to the power of half, right? minus 1 over x to the power of 1 by 3 minus 1. So what should be u? Should it be uh, x to the power of half as u or x to the power of 1 by 3?
Now that's a difficult part. Perfect. So the tricky here is that we substitute the value of x to the power of 1 by 6 as equal to u. So in that case, x, if I have this as square of it, right? So it becomes 1 over 3, right? Will become u square and x to the power of 1 by 2 will be u cube. You understand this part, right? That is kind of most important. So the substitution here is that x to the power of 1 over 6 is u. And you can see as x approaches 1, u also approaches 1, correct? Okay? So that is the substitution. With that, we will rewrite this question as limit u approaching 1 for this square root is actually u cube, right? Minus 1 over u square minus. And therefore, we get limit u approaching 1. This is u minus 1 times u square plus u plus 1, correct? Over u minus 1 times u plus 1. Get the idea, right? Cancelling, we get this as limit u approaches 1 for u square plus u plus 1 over u plus 1. Now, you substitute 1 here, you get 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 3 by 2, right? So, you get 3 by 2 as your answer for this particular question. Extremely important from test point of view. So, I hope with this, you have understood these strategies to find the limit for the functions, right? So, so in our series on calculus master strategies, that is our very first video on practice before the test for how do we find limit of the function. So, likewise in this playlist, you will see many videos which you could follow and actually master strategies on your own. But in case you want to learn directly from me, you can always send an email on globalmathinstitute at gmail.com. Thanks for your time and all the best.